Praise the Lord. Welcome to St. Thomas this morning. We thank you for joining us this morning and we call to worship. Come, let us sing for joy to the Lord. Let us shout out loud to the rocks of our salvation. Let us come before him with thanksgiving and exalt him with music and song. For the Lord is the great God, the great God, King of all gods. And in his hands are the depths of the earth and in the mountain peaks below him. The sea is his, and for he made it, and his hands formed the dry land. Come, let us bow down and worship. Let us kneel before the Lord our maker, for he is our God. 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 Let us pray. Oh, Heavenly Father, we thank you, God, for being our God. Oh, Lord, how great. You are God. You're mighty, God. We just want you to have your way today in this worship service, God. Let us experience the time with you today, God. Move in this place, God. Have your way. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.
blessings come from all these blessings come from who? All these blessings. Come on, give them a round of hand. Stand up. Come on, yeah, come on. Let's get give it to them. There you go. All these blessings, you're a blessing to us. We thank you. That's right. You know, I tell you, it goes a long way. They're going to remember you. They're going to remember you. And we thank you because you're a blessing from God. All these blessings come from God. Mom, grandparents, TT, exciting, isn't it? They're singing out of their hearts. And look at them. And they mean it. He said, smile. <laughs> you know, it's time to, it's praying time. We got a lot going on, and uh, continue to pray for our pastor and his family. You know? Continue to lift him up as we continue to lift him up. And I saw something last week, and I want to continue on just to remind us that we're servants. Also, we have the direct line to God, too, right? So, so as we say, I want you to stand up. And get ready to say the names. Stand up. Stand up. Oh, remind us that we, we have to stand in the gap. We have to be that vessel. And when the names are called, let's call the names out. Let them know that they hear us. They're calling their names out. And, you know, when somebody calls your name out, don't you feel a little special? Like somebody really knows me. So as sisters call the name out, just remember, call their name out. Let them know that. We love them. Pastor McGee. Pastor McGee. Mariah Mariah. 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 Jesse Roby. Doris Palmer. Doris Palmer. Doris Palmer. Doris Palmer. Doris Palmer. Smith. Tamari Lee. Tamari Lee. All our deployed soldiers. All our Lisa Williams, Frank Shelby, Harris Porter, Brian Stanley. Always, always pray for St. Thomas. Pray for me. Praise the Lord. And Pastor, we're praying for you. And we got Sister Ward come up and pray. We know God's word is true. Do we know that God's word is true? And that is the only thing that we need to depend on is the fact that it's God's word. Everything that he says, he said, ask and it shall be given. And we have to think about those things when we're asking. We have to ask and knowing that is going to be given because God tells us to believe. Believe. And we always want you to pray as the person that's praying to pray. Father God, we come to you in the mighty and majestic name of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ of Nazareth. The name that is above every name that is named. We lift you up and we praise you. We magnify your name because you are Lord of Lords, King of Kings. You are the firm foundation. You are the only God, only one that we can go to. We come today thanking you for everyone that is here today. Thanking you and praising you and glorifying you because we are here today. We're able to say, thank you, Lord. Thank you for this time. Thank you for this moment. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your joy. Thank you for your peace. And Lord, today we want to listen to all the names that we called out today. I don't know all the needs of all the names, Lord, but you know. 
Lord, you know the need of every name that was called out today. And I ask, Lord, in Jesus' name that you would answer. Go forth and answer those prayers. Whether it's healing, you have a word for that, for by Jesus' stripes we are healed. And Lord, you said there is no weapon formed against us to prosper in any way. Lord, we thank you. And that we will call on you in everything, in every way. We love you, Lord, today. And Lord, we pray for peace in Israel. We pray for the peace in Israel, Lord, because we know that there are things that's happening over there. And we need your peace, Lord, in Israel. And Lord, we thank you for every house that's represented here today. We know, Lord, that without these people and us and everybody, you would not be able to be blessed. For you want us to praise you, give you thanks, give you glory, because you are worthy to get all of the praise, glory, and honor. And we thank you. And Lord, as the word is brought forth today, Lord, we ask in Jesus' name that you would be in the midst of everything that's going on. For whatever you have for the minister to bring to us today, Lord, that he will come forth with blessings. And Lord, help us to know without a shadow of a doubt that you are always there. You are the way, you are truth, and you are life. And we thank you, Heavenly Father. Bless us as we go through this day. Thank you, Lord, for your blood, for the blood of Jesus saves. Thank you, Lord. Thank you in Jesus' name. In the mighty and majestic name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Thank you. Believe God's word. Believe God's word. Believe God's word. It's true. It's true, and we can't do without it. Lord, thank you. In Jesus' name, thank you, Mother Herod Ward. And as we get ready for tithes and offering, if you need a, if you need an envelope. Just raise your hand right now so we let the usher see if you need tithes and offering. You need an envelope, uh, a pen, anything? Okay. Let's pray. Oh, well, Heavenly Father, right now, God, we thank you, God, for this day, God. We thank you, God, for these tithes and offering, God, that they be used for your kingdom's sake, God. We pray a special prayer, God. On behalf of the giver right now, let you move on their behalf. Whatever they need, according to your will, it, it is done, God. We praise you for your love for us, God, because you first loved us. In Jesus' name we pray. Continue to bless St. Thomas. Amen. Come on, come on, come on with me. Come on, 
Come on and praise the Lord with me. 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 Come on and do your dance 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 with me. Hallelujah. solo right there, Mariah Lane, grandson, did he do a great job? Didn't he do a fantastic job? He did a great job. I was looking for him to do his dance. I know his grandmother was like, boy, do your dance, do your dance. <laughs> but it's good to be in the house where we're praising the Lord with our young people. Don't, don't lose, don't lose it, keep moving and praising who? The Lord, the Lord is on our side. We're with him. We belong to him. I tell you, it's, it was a, a great weekend. Got a chance to, uh, my, my uncle turned 68. And I tell you, it's, it's a small world. Uh, everybody know Brother Chester Stevenson, right? Sister Claire, husband. And uh, he worked with my uncle, my two uncles and my aunt, and my cousin, 
and got a chance to go down to the four wheeler fishing and all that stuff yesterday in the country. And Chester got down there and he said, I'll tell you one thing, if I ever get in trouble with the police, I know where I can hide. <laughs> <laughs> so it was good, to, great fellowship, great time, and uh, we just enjoyed ourselves. My uncle was so excited to see Chester. He was just like, you know, when you just go back and reminisce about how, how good God brought you a long ways, working at Vickers and all those things, and the excitement, and uh, uh, I just want to just share that with you guys. And also, keep praying for Minister Ward. He's traveled to Dallas. Him and Janet celebrate the 20th grandchild who was born last week. 20th. You know, 20, 20. Yes. Yes, 20. And I'll let you know, he, he love all of them. And he, and he love all of them. He take care of them, too. And also remember, if you weren't here, just continue to pray for our pastor and lift him up. Also, we have a guest here, Pastor Odom. You want to join us here? You want to, is it up to you? Is it? Brother Patrick? Oh, yeah, that's right. Hey, look for me. I said, yeah, he look younger and younger. All right. Brother Patrick? Come on. You want to say something? Okay, well, good to have you all here. Y'all know Reverend Patrick, right? Family? No, it's good to be house family, right? If I'm looking at you guys, y'all look at me like I'm a stranger. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm looking like, do I belong here? I mean, sometimes when, you, when you're in a place and you not belong here, you feel what? Estranged. You know, sometimes when you just walk in a place and they don't welcome you and give you that, hey, welcome, brother. You, you, you feel like you don't belong. So do I belong here? I know I belong, but do you belong here? Do you belong here? See, see, see God called us to what? To belong to him, right? Do we act like we belong to Jesus? See, see we get so, so commercialized that we are his. We are his to be used for his purpose. You know, the thought is like my, do you belong to God? My talk was like, you belong to God. But first, do you belong to God? I, young people, stand up for me. Stand up for me. Help me out here. Help me out, young people. Young, elementary, middle school, stand up. Stand up. I need y'all help. Come here. Stand up. See that? I like, the, I like that. So who created you? Who you belong to? That's all I need right there. See, I understand. They, they, they understand who created them. God created them and who they belong to. They should get excited because once you belong to God, nothing can snatch you away. See, I come to understand that people, young people and old, we get estranged from God. We don't know what we don't know. It's a passage in Romans chapter 1, if you want to look at it, but I'm just going to walk you through it. Paul is, is talking to the believers. And I want you to understand something. Have you thought about your past, how you reflect on your past? You weren't always saved, were you? Hmm? Have you ever ran across a person that was well, like your bully? They got on your nerve? They tick you off. They're going to try to beat you up. You remember that? You, you, you going to fight back with them, right? Huh? You wanted to what? Get back? You want to hurt them? Remember Saul? You remember Saul? Huh? Yeah. Yeah. Right, come on, talk to me. I want you to understand. Saul was a man... He had the right, and he had the purpose. His job was what? Look for who? Christians. And destroy them. You know why? Because he didn't belong to no, nothing else. He had nothing else. All thing he had in his mind was destroying people. Look at our young people today. They're what? They're what? They're focused on what? Destroying things. They have no purpose. And we are the light of the world. 
and we're hiding. We're supposed to attract them to the light. We push them aside. Saul was murderous. He had a purpose, and he thought he did. And he believed in it. And look at us someday. Look at us. We just come to church, but do we really worship a true and living God? So Paul said, Paul said, Paul, a servant of Christ. See right there. His past. But now he can say what? I'm a servant of Christ. Can you say that? See, 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 a servant is not just about themselves. See, we get so tired of ourselves. But I praise Lord for my grandparents and my mother who didn't think about themselves. Sister Wilson, I'm going to brag on you because you so, a lot of y'all have so much that you give to your grandchildren. No matter where the mother or a father is located, you pour into them. Amen. That's right. Just like Christ, like God, poured into Saul, didn't he? You remember that story? Let me get my chair so I can understand. See, I like visuals. On that road to Damascus, he got blind. See, sometimes God, not, not so always God, have a purpose. So I was on a mission to, for destruction. But he said, come sit down. He lost his sight. See, some of us lost our abilities. He lost his, 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 he's just so, he was blind and he was strange. He needed help. But God didn't leave him alone, did he? Have you seen someone needing help? Do we help them? Do we reach out to them? But it, it, it's, it's, I look at that and I think about, if you just listen to people, they'll let you know if they belong to Christ or not. It's a simple message today. If we belong to Christ, we should be serving Christ. We should be reaching beyond ourselves. Paul, keep explaining, said, call to be an apostle and set apart for the gospel of who? God. For the gospel of God. Set apart. Sanctified. I am the great I am. That's what he said. I am all you need. I imagine Saul, those three days, been blind. He was going through different emotions. Doing different, different things. Wait a minute. Now I'm with these Christians, they're going to kill me. But no, God reminded me, I got greater things for you. Just trust me. I got somebody going to help you out. Somebody going to speak the word to you. Somebody going to get you baptized and cover you. We are the hope of the world. We I'm just thinking about that lesson. If you just think about, and I start smiling, when the Lord brought something back to me when I was in the first grade. It's all about our young people. We, we all lash out, don't we? We destroy ourselves until we understand we have purpose. I remember I was in the first grade, about that tall. Look at that. Maybe a little bit. Maybe a little bit tall. A little bit. I was, I was, but I was drinking my milk, guys. I was drinking my milk. All right, y'all with me. And I lashed out at somebody because I didn't want them to get my crayons because my mother had bought my crayon and they didn't have any crayons. So I thought I was in control, right? You're not going to use my crayon because my mama bought my crayon for who? For me. And she said, nope, you're going to share. You got 24. You don't need all of them. You're going to share. I was rebellious. And think about today, how rebellious we are. How we allow rebellion in our home. So I took my rebellious self, got on the bus, and I met my grandmother. 
I'm that tall. My grandma was that tall. And I was thinking about this story because we all have lashed out. We all get upset. Mama didn't treat me this way. Daddy didn't treat me this way. I'm upset. I don't belong to this family anymore. I'm going to exile myself. You ever said that before? You ain't my family. You don't belong to me. So I went home. Everything, everything was fine because I was in control. When my grandmother talked to me about love, what you do with all 24 crayons? She talked to me before she whooped me. Okay, I want y'all to understand that, okay? I want to I'm, 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 I'm leave that out. But she taught me about, it's okay, baby. Share your crayons. The Lord provided for you to share with other people so that they can see how blessed God be blessing people. God is in the business of blessing all. He blessed Saul, didn't he? Look it up, Acts 9. Read it on. I was just amazed how, how God just walked walk him through this and let him know that he was good. How many of you are lashing out today? How many of you feel like, I really don't belong? I don't need you. I'm all, I'm good. Did you ever say that? I'm good. I'm fine. But Paul will remind us that we're what? Set apart what? For the gospel. For what? The good news. The exciting news. That Jesus what? Loves us. That's exciting, isn't it? Have you ever shared Christ to someone? Someone who felt like they didn't belong because they didn't have the space for Jesus? That was empty when you met them, but when you left them, they was full. You remember that? Or you remember that when somebody came in contact with you, when you was empty, but yet you became full. That's what he's talking about. The gospel that meets your needs where you are. See, some of you searching and searching and searching. You're getting older and older. We're getting older. Search all high. Search all high. Search all low. Searching, searching. He said, I'm here. Yeah. Amen. On Sunday, we are high. We're, we're, we're going. We get to work. Yo. Co-workers don't even know that you belong to God. They can tell by our works how we would treat them. I give God the praise. I've been in management over 20 years, and people look at me like, you a Christian, aren't you? Don't boast about it, but yeah, I love the Lord. Corporate, non-corporate, doesn't, doesn't change me. Man, you don't cuss. Why? Why? Don't insult me. I'm intelligent. That's the kind of guy we serve. He give us what to say, what, when to say it. He said, the gospel he promised before and through his prophet in the Holy Scripture. See, we got to get into the word. We got to get into the what? Word together. Sit down and what? Break bread. I, 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 I take my team out and I tell them, we, we break bread. We go out to eat. Somebody said, what? I said, we just have a conversation. How are you doing? How can I pray for you? You do the same thing. You sit down and talk to people. Because we're set apart for the gospel of Jesus Christ. All right, all right. I'm going to leave y'all on right here. But I'm going to tell you why. Verse 6 said, and you are also amongst those who are called to belong to Jesus Christ. You're called to what? 
belong to Jesus Christ. He calling your name. He knows your thoughts. He knows your pain. He's calling your name, Saul. He's calling you. I got a better deal for you. I got a better purpose for you. The way you thought was right is not right. I'm calling you. I want you to understand that I'm not giving up, giving up on you. What a great God we serve. What's in us today? He's calling us to belong to God. Think about this fast forward. And you're sitting there, or you're laying across how you want your story to end. See, we got to think ahead. I like Luke put it like this. Count the cost, right? I love counting the cost. I love that verse. It said, count the cost. Before you even do it, count the cost. Always give God credit. He always gives us a way out. D? Always give a way out. Yeah. I go, Darius. What's up, Darius? That's my, my guy right there. Love you, brother. Love you. He always give us the way out. I'm reminded of a story. I'm going to get personal with you guys a little bit. My, my, my oldest son shared something. He said, Daddy, I'm not going to get married. What? I said, what, what, what I'm doing wrong here? Okay, what I'm doing wrong here? What I'm doing wrong here? He said about a couple years back, you know, I'm like, and I prayed about it. I said, wow, let's look in the scripture what it says about marriage. He said, a man find a wife, he found a what? And he found what? See, I forgot that. And, and what? Favor with who? I showed him that verse. He found a what? A good thing and what? Favor. Who won't favor? Who won't favor with God? Huh? Huh? See, you got to say, he looked at that thing. He said, did, 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 did. I didn't say nothing else. He's been married almost a year now. <laughs> the public wedding is in May. Let y'all know that so y'all don't get mad with me. He just put on, oh, no, that's me. But I share that because that's what the gospel for is. That's the good news, right? Favor with God, understanding our role, what we're doing, right? So that God can what? Bless us. You hear the children, I'm, they're, they're blessed. Look at us now. Growing up, no shoes, all this stuff like this, but yet how far are we advancing God's purpose? How far are we advancing God's purpose in our lives? All this stuff God is blessing with, is he number one? Look at our, look at, well, you look at y'all grandchildren. We ain't, no, we ain't no grandchildren right now. Praise the Lord right now. We, we, we too young, honey. We too young? All right. <laughs> Better watch out, my son Jared. Better watch him out. Watch him out. But uh, laughter is a good mess. But I just want to remind us that we belong to God. And as a believer, we have, except Jesus Christ into our heart, always remember as a servant of the Lord that you belong to Jesus Christ all the time. Let nobody, let nothing get, separate you from the love of God. Yeah, we're going to lash out sometime, but that's where God, well, repentance come in. You ask God to forgive you. You ask God, Lord, I, I surrender. I'm... I'm sorry. I messed up. Have you ever did that before? Were you sorry about it? Uh, think about that. You got to be sorry about the way I, I messed up. It is what it is. No? You got to show some remorse. Lord, I, I messed up. Forgive me. I repent and turn away from my wicked ways. Then he went on, verse 7 said, to all the wrong who are loved by God. Loved by who? I'm going to stop right there. Loved by God. So if God loved Rome, do you think he loved us too? People know 
if we're a family by what? The way you what? We love each other. Do you love your brother and sister? Do you love your brother and sister? See, see, they need to hear that. See, some people haven't been here in a while. They need to know that they love. They need to know that I love you because God loved me too. We're family. We are loved by God and called to be saints. Let me sit right there. We call to be what? Set apart to be what? Saints. Not set apart to be sinners, but to be saints. God designed us to be that light on the hill, to share his love, to remind everyone that I'm with you always. I love you with an everlasting love. Nothing will ever take you out of my hands. What did he do to Saul? Saul went on and did great and wonderful works for God. He changed the world. He changed his family. He changed his followers to show them the way to Christ. He changed. That's the word I can look at. He changed. Have you changed today? Have you changed? Or are you up and down? You don't know if you're up or down. To be set apart for God's give us grace and peace to you from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace and peace. Grace and peace. Grace and peace. How many of you want grace? How many need peace? He said, I'm giving it to you. I'm giving it to you now because I love you. Yes, we want peace. We want grace. Or we're going to surrender. Or we're going to give it up. See, it makes a difference when you know that you belong to the family of God. So many times, I, I, I'm, I'm just an observer. I'm a very analytical, Sister Cormac. I observe, watch and pray. And you see people who say they're Christian, but they seem like they're estranged to the family. They're not connected to the family. They feel like they don't belong to the family. You know my business. I know your past. What about Saul? Everybody knows his past, right? But look at his future. Look at the impact he made in a short period of time. Just like that. Well, I want you to understand that you belong with Christ. Once you accept Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, you belong with Christ. You are to be his. Galatians put it this way. I have been crucified with Christ, and I no longer live but Christ lived in me. The life I now live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. So a couple weeks back, we celebrated what? The resurrection. That's what, a new life. I've been crucified with Christ. I no longer live, but Christ lived in who? You're taking Christ wherever you're, where you go. You're taking Christ wherever where you go. And he loves you. And people are going to know that we love each other by what? By our love for each other. So as we step up our love and show people, show affection, how much we love each other, God is smiling. Watch the peace overflow. Watch the grace overflow. Once we understand, you just don't love this side, you love all sizes. And that's when we're going to start growing in God's word. And I saw something that, that, that brought me to this. I've, I've been praying strongly for our young people. You hear all this news going on? 
once they understand that they belong to God and how God changed Saul, he can change them. Nothing they've done that God won't forgive them. Nothing will be able to separate or not penetrate that, that gospel. That gospel will penetrate the heart. He's knocking at the door. And the good thing about that is when we go, I told you I'm from the country, right? When harvest time comes, when it's time to harvest, I remember them watermelon be out there, my granddad, 50 acres, 100 acres of watermelon. I remember we used to take a break. We had to go to McDonald's. We cut, we, we split two watermelons, one to wash your hands and one to eat. One to wash your hands and one to eat. The harvest is plentiful. And as believers who belong to Jesus Christ, we have a job to do. Not just our family, but what? The whole community and beyond to let them know that they belong to God. Because we start off with, you belong to God, and let us abide in love. We talk about this today in our Sunday school about differences. Love cover a multitude of what? Of all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you love God? Yes. See, he loves you back. And that's why we are set apart to do the great work. So let's bring some energy. Let's bring some excitement because God love us. And you know what? We got to move quickly. Because he's coming back. Amen. And we're not, we're not, we're not, we're not here just to relax. We're here to move forth the gospel of Jesus Christ and let people know that God loves them. Despite what man may say, God is able to do the impossible in their lives. So young people, stop the lashing out. You belong to God. And God gave you specific instructions to obey your father and mother. Don't question it. Meditate on it. And parents, our job is what? To love the Lord with all our mind, body, and soul. He's going to work it out. Won't he work it out? Yeah. Hadn't he work it out? Yeah. Will he work it out? Yes, he will. That's the kind of God we serve. See, we need to let people know that's the God. He's going to work it out, despite me, because his will must go forward. We have to love. That's what Paul said. Love. God loved us, so we have to show what? Love for all. Let's get ready to close. Maybe today you realize, you know what? I've been searching, searching, searching. I just don't feel like I belong. We'll come and pray for you, pray with you. Share the good news. Like Paul shared the good news. He was set apart for the good news. And the good news is for everybody today. It's good for us to draw near to him and he draw near to us. To show us that he loved us from the beginning. Because what? The children of mine that God created them. And remember when we was children? Childlike faith. The God that we what belong to God? Huh? You know how educated we got. All the blessings we've got, financial blessing, but God still deserves his praise and glory. Today, we want to pray with you. And just remind you that God loves you. And he's reaching for you. He's pursuing you. He won't let you know that he loves you with everlasting love. As we get ready to sing, the invitation is extended today. As you understand, Jesus is everything we need. Jesus is everything we need. Jesus will meet all our needs right now.
Do you love him? You belong to God. Jesus. another day and praise God for our beautiful young people, the sons and daughters of St. Thomas. Amen. I can see our future. New Hope Missionary Baptist Church is celebrating the 10th pastoral anniversary of Reverend Marshall L. McGee Jr., 106 East Hamilton Street, Jackson, Mississippi, 39202. And this is Sunday, April 21st, 2024 at 10 a.m. Road to Unity Christians United for Christ, 2K Walk, April 20th, 9 to 12 a.m. This will be held at Richland Park East Side. Registration is $20, and this includes the T-shirt and lunch. Groups of 10 for a booth of $25 registration. There will be local entertainment. Bring your lawn chairs, and you can register now. The point of contact is Michelle James. You can reach her at 601-720-0223. And this is presented by the New Hope Outreach Ministry, the local churches, businesses, and friends, and Dr. Lamar L. Boone, the pastor. His number is 601-939-7398. Get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready. Announcing Vacation Bible School is rapidly approaching. It's that time again. Sign up. Be the first to sign up for June 10th through the 13th for 2024. God's superheroes and assistant superheroes are needed. Join the fun and receive great blessings. Many items are still available from the giveaway on yesterday. Um, you can go over to the Life Center and see what's available. It is another good day to worship here at St. Thomas. Do we have any visitors? All family? Praise God. One more. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Would you like to stand? Would you like to say anything? God bless you, too. Amen. Amen. My apologies. I didn't see you over there. <laughs> we, are, we realize you could have worshipped anywhere today, and we appreciate you worship, worshiping here at St. Thomas this morning. Be blessed in your week to come, fam. Okay, uh, one more announcement. Sister Burns. Okay, I didn't get this to the announcing clerk, but I just want to reach out to our parents uh, that have small children. The Hines County Congress is coming up in June, the end of June, and we want our young people to participate in the oratorica. And that means that we want them to speak. We've always been in the Hines County Congress. Our pastor is the president of this Congress, and we certainly want to hold up the Congress uh, this year. So if you have a young person from the age, at the age of 7 to 9, 10 to 12, 13 to 15, 16 to 18, that you can uh, encourage to get a speech and participate in the Hines County Congress, just let us know. They will represent St. Thomas at the Congress, and we will prepare the speeches for them, if they will. So please, you know, encourage the young people. We can get as many as we want to, and then we will have uh, the elimination here, okay? So we're encourage, encouraging you to participate in the Congress this year with our young people. We have a great group of young people. I mean, we have them. We have a great group of young people. 
and, and we are happy about that. So be ready to participate in the different things that go on in the Congress, okay? Our we pastor would be proud of us if we did that. All right. Uh, it's June the 23rd, 24th, 25th. The last week in June is the Congress, and it will be at Mount Olive this, this year. Of June. So practice to, to, to turn the names in. Yeah. Well, when you want the names in. So by the end of this month, bring the name in, all right? By the end of this month. Give you time to pray about it. Get it going. All right. Anything else? No one? Someone? Uh, we're going to sing our song. We, we're going to do something a little different. Not different, but we're going to pray. Sister Ward, we're going to pray for the, the youth. So we're going to do the song, and then she's going to pray, and we're going to be in, closed by her. Stand up. Let's look to the Lord in prayer. And before I pray, just touch a young person, hug them, hold their hand. Make sure, make sure they know that they are covered. Amen. That they belong. Not only do they belong to God, but they belong to you. Amen. Amen. They, they belong to a village. Amen. Amen. It is just so good when a young person, for them to know when they're going through. Amen, that they're not alone. Thank God for the message. Thank God for the word that is appropriate for our young people. Lord, in the name of Jesus, how we thank you that you are how God, you are Lord, how you love us, Lord, even in spite of us. Lord, how you bless us, not necessarily because of us, but because you have found favor with us. God, we thank you for the word that has gone forth here today that will resonate not only in the ears of uh, and the hearts of our young people, but all of us, Lord, that we belong to you. Though when we're going through stuff, when we're going through struggles, you promise never to leave us nor forsake us. God, even when we mess up, we still hear your words saying to you, you belong to me. I have called you. I've created you. I've redeemed you. I've uh, called you by name. Thank you that we are part of your family. Thank you for all of these young people that are here. Thank you for the St. Thomas family for many a years who have loved on these young people, Lord, and been instrumental in bringing them up in the nurture and the admonition of the Lord. Thank you, God, for each one that are here today. Lord, we know that it's not by accident, it's not by happenstance that they're here, God, you've ordained this day. In the name of Jesus, bless every young person right now that is in this room. God, strengthen them. God, keep them in the midst of it all. Cover them when they leave out of the home going to school. God, cover them with your blood, God. We know that uh, so many things are happening. God, we need you every day, every minute, every hour, God, to cover us 
Lord, we bind the enemy who seeks to kill to steal and to destroy. God, right now, we lose the power of your Holy Spirit. Bless now, God, in the name of Jesus. God, we just love you. We just praise you. God, we ask right now, even as we are as we're praying for our young people, that you will lift, God, that you will bless now, Pastor McGee, God. We pray for healing. God, we pray for strength. We pray for restoration of his body in the name of Jesus. Oh, God, we lift him in the family. We lift everyone that is here right now by your power, by your might, God, by your word, God, by your spirit in the name of Jesus. We ask that you will bless and we thank you in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, the name that is above every name. Jesus' name, we pray, we thank you. Amen, amen, and amen.